What is up, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. I have a very special edition of Speed with Sneed today. We're going to be doing some field testing on AT&T's 5G+. Plus. This is AT&T's variation of millimeter wave 5G technology. Uh, this is not the regular 5G, which is N5 or 850 megahertz 5G. Or it is also not the 5GE, which is essentially just advanced LTE. Anyways, what we're going to do is go through all of the testing that I did in this afternoon uh, of testing and I'll give you a full breakdown of how AT&T has it configured, how it performs and my take all the way at the end of this video. So as um, a bit of a background, so you know what we're looking at here. Uh, these are sites that are millimeter wave nodes that also have CRAN uh, configured on those sites. So those CRAN sites are extremely fast, although they are LTE. They also are equipped with these uh, millimeter wave nodes. They're configured with two uh, I guess we'll just call them two sectors, right? One facing an opposite direction of the other. And, uh, you know, they're transmitting that millimeter wave pretty uh, pr pretty well, actually. So uh, site number one is located in the east bank of the flats in the CLE, uh, placed on a street pole, uh, power line pole. There's restaurants, clubs, bars, apartments, heavy walking traffic, auto traffic. There's ride hailing services that frequent there like Uber and Lyft. I start testing the site about two and a half blocks away. Uh, it does not really connect well. Uh, it's kind of touch and go, actually. And, um, you know, within the, the two blocks, it's it's pretty reliable. As long as you're within the line of sight, that helps quite a bit. But in terms of the setup, the millimeter wave nodes are two-sector arrangement. Below the LT antennas uh, are positioned there. And then, you know, traditional small cell setup, essentially, right? So those CRAN setups that I was describing, five carrier aggregation, when I connected to those, it was band two and band 66, uh, three carriers of 20 megahertz LAA. So really, really fast LT as well as the 5G millimeter wave. Now, in terms of the speed test values, I was getting 1000 megabits per second on the downlink, 37 megabits per second on the uplink. I was also able to see, uh, you know, single digit latency, which is great, nine milliseconds on that first test. The second test showed a similar performance. Uh, the test completed uh, probably, you know, I don't, I don't know, probably about a full block distance. Uh, you know, it did pretty good. Uh, what I noticed with these sites and what I noticed with the performance on this first site is if you've got line of sight with the millimeter wave from AT&T, you're going to test just fine. It does get a little bit more challenging when there are obstructions. I mean, it's it's pretty evident that the millimeter wave technology, the 5G plus from AT&T, is not as far along as what you know Verizon has. Verizon has dumped a lot of R&D research and development into their millimeter wave. So they just they haven't gotten there just yet. But, you know, you're getting good speeds when you're within a, a reasonable distance. You're getting line of sight and there isn't too much for obstruction. If you're a little closer, the obstructions are less of an issue. Uh, but it definitely doesn't have that beam forming uh, performance that we see from Verizon Wireless with their millimeter wave. But, you know, in, in terms of what you should expect from millimeter wave, the textbook story on it, I think AT&T's performance is up to par. So, you know, the, the range, as long as it's within realistic distance, you're doing pretty good and there's no obstructions. It'll perform just fine. Let's go on to the next site. With the second location for the testing site here, uh, this one isn't too far from the other test site, although it is um, the other site was a little bit lower near the Cuyahoga River uh, over by the lake. This one is a little bit further south, uh, and it's a little bit, um, I'd say, probably east of the last location. And uh, it's a closer location to larger amounts of people. It's near, uh, you know, the, the Tower City Amphitheater. It's near, you know, Town Square. There's the casino that's pretty close by. There are also clubs and restaurants and, you know, parking areas, parking garages. And um, there's also offices. There's a hotel. So there's quite a bit going on there. Uh, what I've also noticed about this area is tons and tons of traffic. There's a busing hub. There are office buildings, loft apartments. You know, there's a lot of auto traffic, a lot of walking uh, walking traffic. And uh, But I, what I did notice, and, and you'll see that I did test the site within the car, it's got essentially the same hardware as it had as as site one. Nothing's really changing. All the sites that I tested looked, you know, and were set up exactly the same. So the first test I ran within the car, just 
because people apparently don't understand this, glass does not prevent the signal transmission. Even at about 500 feet away, I was still able to connect and get very good speeds on that first test. So uh, on that first test, I did get single digit latency about six milliseconds. The downlink was at 751 megabits per second, the uplink at 18.5 megabits per second. I repeated the testing again outside of the vehicle and that's what you all are seeing now. Uh, in this test, I was able to get 11 milliseconds latency. The downlink speed was 1.1 gigs per second. Very, very fast. Uplink, 51 megabits per second. So the uplink uh, connection there, I think, was band 2 when I tested it. So I think it was 15 megahertz of band 2. I added some distance each time I did another test. So you'll see me adding distance crossing the street. Uh, I added about 100 feet every time I moved back. Uh, further away from the testing site. So I wanted to do this because I wanted to see how much the range, you know, uh, was a, was affected by distance. So, you know, testing at a greater distance to see if the speeds and the connections were still just as good or to note if they were degrading over that space. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that I, I tested that for you all. And, and I tried to retain line of sight because that's one of the things that really seems to help millimeter wave. If you stay within line of sight, it really seems to help. Now with this next test, with the latency, I was able to get nine milliseconds. So AT&T is doing really good things with the uplink. I was very, very impressed to see this. Uh, the uplink speeds were excellent. They were, for the most part, always sub 15 milliseconds and sub 10 milliseconds. So it was really nice to see that. In this test, the downlink speed did reach 90, uh, 935 megabits per second. And uh, the uplink did reach 35, uh, 34 megabits per second so even with the added distance <clears throat> the um the speed wasn't really degrading just yet you know when you look at the uh the extra 100 feet you know i added so what i do after this test specifically i go ahead and i move back i'm going to add more distance i think this one i moved back probably about 80 feet again i didn't you know actually measure anything but i just kind of gauged you know how far i moved back according to the addresses uh, you know, and how many car distances I moved back. So uh, with this next test, remember, we're connected to the same site. There were no other sites within distance to connect to. So I knew it was the same one. The latency was eight milliseconds. The downlink came in still very, very fast. Uh, 992 megabits per second on the downlink. So still pushing that gigabit speed mark and still showing that even with the added distance, for the most part, the speed wasn't changed on the downlink. The uplink came in at 32 megabits per second. So I was happy to see, even with adding 80 to 100 feet in distance, the signal was still there. The speed was still there. It did not degrade according to that distance. Because if you think about it, I started my testing about 500 feet away. I added 100 feet a couple of times. So I'm at six, 700 feet probably. And then uh, when I do this next test, I'll move back another 100 or so feet. And I'll give you guys kind of a summary of what I saw there. So when I added this distance now, uh, you'll see that I'm kind of navigating over there. This is when I actually started to see some performance degradation. The speed started to slow a little bit. The latency was still pretty good, but the speed was definitely, you know, it was lower. Uh, it was not as fast as it was before. So something is, I don't know, I'd, I'd estimate maybe 900 feet to 1,000 feet at that point. AT&T's millimeter wave does seem to lose some performance. So the latency was 10 milliseconds on this test. The downlink was about 697 megs and the uplink about 11 megs. So speed did begin, or excuse me, speed did begin to degrade at about a thousand feet, but it did remain connected. It was reliable. And I ran the test a few times even after this, and it did stay connected to millimeter wave. So overall, nice job at that site, well configured for that site. Now that we move over to the third testing site, again, I wanted to make sure that I tested it within the car. For those people that have doubts about millimeter waves, propagation characteristics and qualities, a lot of people say things like it doesn't work through glass, that is 100% false. I just wanted to reaffirm this and confirm it to you. Millimeter wave does indeed work through glass, even at some fair amount of distance, it does work. So to give you uh, just a basic description of where site number three is, it's amongst many condos and apartments, tons of them. There were probably um, 
Well over a couple of hundred apartments located within the vicinity of the site. There were multiple parking lots, several parking garages, uh, all types of unique living quarters, balconies, uh, you know, brick arrangements. There were, uh, you know, some dips and some some different hills on the side where this node was located. And, you know, like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like Millimeter Wave seems to be finding its way in locations where technically they shouldn't, you know, these nodes shouldn't work very well, but, but they seem to be performing if engineers and companies, you know, set it up correctly and really design it well in terms of their plan. So you'll see that this is a very narrow street with very directional node placement. I try to zoom in here and get you a really good view. You'll see the CRAN, the LT connection at the top, and then you'll see the nodes right below them. And, you know, I began testing inside the car. So obviously the glass does not prevent the transmission of the millimeter wave connections, which is good to see. Uh, the next phase of testing, I got out of the car and tested for different distances. I started a few hundred feet away from, you know, the node. Um, and then I actually got all the way, I think, to about a thousand feet in distance. So I did test from a couple of blocks away. In the car, I got nine millisecond latency, 700 plus megabits per second on the downlink, nine megabits per second on the uplink. Uh, the nodes were actually behind me when I ran the test. So that's another thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is millimeter wave has come far, uh, far along to the point where you no longer have to worry about if it's behind you or in front of you. Does it help if it's in front of you? Yes. Is it still going to work if it's behind you? Yes. So it's not as touchy and sensitive and directional as it used to be. It's gotten better outside the car and onto the street and the sidewalks. I walked around. I added some distance. I was probably a few hundred feet away. Like I said, that second round of testing got me a 15 millisecond latency, 1.2 gigs per second on the downlink, 44 megabits per second on the uplink and being outside greatly improved the performance of this connection. So does it work inside of enclosed areas? It does but it's not as good so it always does help if you can get line of sight if you can be within a reasonable distance you know if, if you reduce how much propagation has to be done millimeter wave performs even better all right so um to continue on with some of the values and some of the testing i saw here you'll see that i do continue to add more and more distance i do continue to test uh from further away and for the most part the performance is good up to a certain extent I remember, you know, when I first started testing millimeter wave, it was very, very touchy from all carriers, whether it was AT&T, Verizon or T-Mobile, but things seem to be coming along pretty well. Uh, you'll get a good look at the hardware that I, you know, showed here with the LT antennas at the top, the millimeter wave nodes at the bottom. I think AT&T does a pretty good job of setting it up with the CRAN configuration and the millimeter wave combo site. It's really good performance. It's well configured. I'm going to test from a few more distances here. I added about 300, 500 feet, and then about 1,000 feet. And, you know, the latencies were excellent. I really liked what AT&T did in terms of their configuration. So I was happy to see that, you know, that it does work about two blocks away. And the latencies were low and the uplink were good. Uh, you know, adding the distance, maintaining light of sight still worked for the most part. Uh, some of this testing... Uh, one of the, one of the tests I got, I think nine milliseconds latency, 938 megabits per second on the downlink uplink about 41, uh, not much of a performance degradation on the first edition of distance, add some more distance, maintain line of sight. My next testing site I got, or test I ran, I got latency of eight millisecond downlink of about a gig and then uh, uplink of about 24 megabits per second. And then, um, this is where I actually started to kind of see a little bit of a dip in performance. I added more distance. I was still technically line of sight, and uh, but I did have to come back a few steps. So I'm going to show you guys this here. I'm going to step away. I'm going pretty far. I'm really adding a lot of distance here, and I wanted to do that on purpose because I wanted to see what the edge site was on this millimeter wave connection for AT&T. So what actually ends up happening, I probably went beyond a thousand feet. And that's where I started to have trouble getting the connection. So I don't know if it was, you know, the uh, the issue of being line of sight. There were, you know, tons of street lights in my way. Uh, obviously, the node was starting to kind of get to elevation because I was going down a hill. I don't know if that affected it. It, it possibly may have. I don't know. Uh, but in this particular test, 
you know, after I was able to finally get connected and it was a struggle because it did fall back to LTE. But when I did kind of scoop back up here, you'll see me getting a little bit closer. I had about five to 10 feet. That was enough to get me connected back to the 5G plus and get on the millimeter wave. And uh, on this test, I was able to show a latency of seven milliseconds. Really, really good. I also get about 760 megabits on the downlink, 24 megabits per second on the uplink. And you'll get a good view of the distance. Like you can't even really see the node from a regular camera view. So I want to give you all kind of my takeaways on AT&T millimeter wave. Overall, for the most part, if I could be completely objective about it and honest, AT&T millimeter wave at this point is, is good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's generally effective. I think it's well configured. It's well engineered. AT&T seems to have a good grasp on what they want to do with millimeter wave, strategically where they're putting it, how they're deploying it, and how they're designing their footprint and where they're placing these nodes. The nodes are shared with LTE upgrades. Five carrier aggregation on the LTE side really gives the benefit to the LTE and not just the 5G devices. So I want to commend AT&T for upgrading with CRAN sites that also have millimeter wave. Uh, I also want to throw in the fact that you know, the distance is decent, but does require line of sight. Strictly not as effective as Verizon. Verizon does seem to do this the best. Uh, better distance, better propagation, but AT&T is still pretty good. I do want to give them props, and uh, I, I'm excited to see what they do in the future moving forward with this connection. And Hopefully it does improve and it gets better. For the sake of the customers, we shall continue to test as more of those nodes are built out here in the CLE. Thank you all for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video and found it informative, please do rate this video, give it a thumbs up, share it to all your favorite social media platforms. If you are new, first time here, consider subscribing, activate that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And do check out some of the links in the description box. There's ways to donate. We have the link to the SMT Patreon page, the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech, where we also do Periscope Lives. And here are some other videos that I did hand select for you all to check out if you're not ready to leave the SMT YouTube channel just yet. Anyways, again, thank you for being here to watch. I am the SMT. Have a great rest of the day, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.